Unit 1.4, Normal Strain and Shear Strain. The course outcome that we're focused on is to develop an understanding of normal and shear stress and strain. In the previous units, we've looked at normal and shear stress. And now we focus on normal and shear strain. In our lesson outcomes, there are two of them. Understand the concept of normal strain and solve for normal strain in a deformed body and under, understand the concept of shear strain and solve for shear strain in a deformed body. What is a deformed body? That's a structural member that has changed its shape due to some applied loads. The concept of normal and shear strain help us understand the deformation that has occurred in the member. Let's start with normal strain. Suppose I have a structural member and I put two dots arbitrarily on this member. And these are two points, and the distance between those two points is L0. Now suppose I put a load on this member and pull it, subjecting it to a tension force. What's going to happen to those two dots? Well, they're going to move apart. And the new distance between those two points is L prime. And the change in the distance between those two points we're going to call delta. This is the Greek letter delta. And we can define normal strain as follows. Now first of all, notice that normal strain is going to be given the Greek letter epsilon. Okay. We're going to refer to this strain as average strain. It's the average st normal strain that's occurring between these two points. And we'll define it as the new length after it's been deformed minus the original length between the two points, all divided by the original length. So normal strain is, is a ratio of the change in length over original length. Another way to look at this is the average strain is equal to this delta. That's the change divided by the original length. Now strain works in the opposite direction too. Suppose we put a force in the opposite direction. We compress the member. What, are, what is going to happen to those two points? Well, we see that they move closer together. Our new length we'll still call L prime, and that change in length we will still call delta. To clarify whether the strain is, is occurring in a member that is getting longer or in a member that is getting shorter, uh, we're going to use uh, appropriate signs. Okay? If our average strain is positive, then the distance between the two points has increased. Let's look at this first uh, example where we put a tension force on the member and it elongated. It, the new length, L prime, is larger than the original length. So if we look at our equation, L prime minus L naught will yield a positive number on the top. So our average normal strain will be positive. In the second example, when we put a compressive force on the member, the member shortened. So L prime is less than L naught. Looking at the equation, L prime minus L naught would give us a negative number. And therefore, our normal, average normal strain would be negative. In the first case, delta, the change in length is positive. In the second case, delta would be, therefore, negative. Now let's talk about units. First, for US customary units, let's look at the equation. L prime, the new length, minus the original length is a change in length, or delta is a change in length. The units on that would be in, most likely, inches. That's the most convenient unit, typically. And on the bottom, original length would also be in inches of or units of inches. So those units on top and bottom are the same, and therefore they cancel out. In SI units, the units we're typically using would be meters per meter, or millimeters per millimeter. In either case, the units on the top are canceled by the units on the bottom. So sometimes you'll see units for strain written in this form, inches per inch or millimeters per millimeter, or the units will be left off entirely, which is fine. 